Hi everyone, welcome to Fintech Academy. This is Hirsch. Today I will go through and show you guys how to record cash sales in QuickBooks Desktop. All right, let's get started with that. All right, cash sales. Receiving payment when you deliver a service or product is known as a cash sale. Even though your customer might pay you with cash, check, or credit card. So whichever way the payment has been, but basically the thing is that you are getting the money right away. Let's say you sold a service or a product. If your customers want records of these payments, you can give them sales receipts. In QuickBooks, a sales receipt can do double duty. So basically, yes, let's say if you are running a small kind of like a store or a POS, something like that, and you know, not with very heavy traffic, but you want to give out sales receipt or print out and hand it over to your customer as a walk-in or even send by email, uh, in QuickBooks desktop, there is a template which is called sales receipt and that can do double duty. What are those? Well, it records the cash sale in the program. So basically, you know, your books are updated straight away, right? You don't have to do any additional transactions at the end of the day or end of the period or end of the week, whatever it is. And you can print it as a paper receipt for your customer. So basically, you know, uh, most of the time, so let's say if you're not using QuickBooks and if it's used at, as a back-end program in the front end you have another uh, program or other software or the hardware that you're using then generally what I've seen that you know the posting needs to be done at the end of the day to the QuickBooks so that QuickBooks can also be brought up to date with whatever sales that has happened and if there is any taxes and all the stuff well if you use uh, sales receipts right which is within QuickBooks desktop you don't need to do that because basically when you record the sales receipts automatically, if you are using inventory, that is also uh, taken care. If you are uh, recording uh, the sales, that is get taken care. So profit and loss. And uh, with respect to if you have the taxes, the balance sheet also gets updated straight away. And of course, you can give a printed copy if you need to or send an email of the sales receipt. There is no accounts receivable in cash sales. The customer is only for reference and printing receipt. That is the good thing about uh, cash sales, right? Because the money has been received right over there. So of course, there is nothing that is going to go and sit in the accounts receivable. That is money yet to be received. That generally happens and, uh, and uh, it will happen when you do a credit sales, I mean to say you just enter the invoice and thereafter whenever you receive the payment till that time it is an accounts receivable. So cash sales or sales receipt uh, as it is what is called in QuickBooks desktop is like you know one shot and everything gets done. All right let's see live in action how to handle the transactions of cash sales in QuickBooks desktop. All right, guys, so I'm right over here in QuickBooks Desktop. I have the QuickBooks uh, Desktop Premier Accountant Edition, which is 2021. And this is the portion or this is the area of uh, customers and the sales receipts is right over here. Bill your customer and receive the payment at the same time. That's what is this template, which is in other terms also called cash sales, right? So basically, that's what the template will be focusing. Let's click on that and uh, let's see how we record the transaction over here. So this is where the sales receipts um, uh, dropped in over here, right? And we have the customer that we can put in over here. Now remember, there is no accounts receivable. So the customer is just a mere spectator, right? Just for um, recording the transaction and getting print of the uh, receipt if you need to. All right, so basically what we can do is um, many times this is a question that has been asked to me that uh, when I do consulting, right, that what should we put in the customer? I can't ask for every single customer name, let's say if, if it's a store, right, or it's a kind of a, a situation where there could be maybe in a day 20 invoices or 50 invoices that are put in, but we don't want to get the details of that uh, to whom that we did the sale and their address and this and that, all those details. Well, what you can do is, uh, you're right, there's no accounts receivable, so you don't need to, but let's say if you want to give a printing of invoice to a uh, 
the sales receipt to an individual right then of course uh, you may need to get their name and uh, all those stuff but let's say if someone says i don't need to then you can either uh, type in over here the name for example sometimes uh, someone might say i i will be recording the transactions but whenever i want i will put in the name uh, needed but uh, what is a generic name that i can give well you can just mention over here like this like daily sales for example right as a customer or you can put in over here daily customers um, sales uh, sales like this whichever is a generic name that you want because you know you will be able to see the transactions but there will be no balance so let's say if I'm just gonna call it daily customer sales and I can do a quick ad or I can do a setup setup is the, when I want to put in the details like contact details as well as the you know, address and all the stuff but I just want to do a quick ad in this example so you know there you go I have daily customer sales over here but let's say if I wanted to give an invoice to someone then I can put their name over here like first name uh, last name whatever it is and I can put in the address uh, let's say 100 training lane uh, the address that they want on the invoice right in the city of Mississauga or whichever it is and then I can put in the province and uh, you know I'll just make a postal code uh, don't even know but anyway like this something over here so I can always type in manually uh, something like this right deposit to so deposit to is going to be where do you want to take the funds now by default there, that is going to undeposited funds which is an account in QuickBooks desktop that means that you are going to take the amount in undeposited funds and from there you will be posting another transaction whenever you deposit the funds in the bank now if someone says uh, well you know I have one to put it directly in the bank then you can select that um, or if there is a petty cash if you're maintaining and you want to put it under that there are all these options but the easiest is undeposited funds right uh, generally that's what is being done so you know we'll put it over there the date is right over here let's say I'm doing the sale on, as on today's date so I'm going to let it be at 26th of August the numbering is automatic but let's say if I want to have something like this uh, sales receipt uh, 003 I can do that and then QuickBooks is going to follow that let's say I, I want to put in the I already mentioned the name over here but I want to mention that the product uh, that we are selling so let's say I did some service sales so I'm going to pick up that service sales and description is services um, no quantity but let's say I'm going, to, I'm going to charge the customer $100 so automatically I have 100 over here H is there which is the HST amount and I have 113 over here if I want to put a quick little small message thank you for your business and I want to see that how does the sales receipt template look well I can click on the print and underneath that there is a small little down arrow and I'll click on the preview over here when I click on the preview it's going to show me this is how my template will look I can click uh, the place where I want to zoom and have a, a bigger view so if I want to see uh, sold to there you go whatever I had mentioned is right over here and the description is there and the rate and the amount is there now if someone says I want to get rid of few fields like quantity we don't need unit we don't need a couple of things over here of course you can make all those changes you can design your template QuickBooks does have an option on that so basically there you go that's your uh, sales receipt which is pretty much ready right uh, amount and all the stuff I'm going to click on close I will do save and new for example as soon as I do that this is what is the question being asked information changed you have changed daily customer sales and that means the customer that we mentioned over here billing address this change will reflect in your current transaction do you want to make it permanent i.e reflect in all your past and future transactions now if this would be like a permanent customer right uh, let's say uh, with whom I'm going to deal for uh, maybe long term then I would say yes but this is not that case so I'm going to say no over here because next time I when I select daily customer sales I don't want that information popping up if I want to record anything I will do it manually
Now, if you are wondering that, hey, what is this deposit to undeposited funds? Well, that is your account where the money is going to show and get it deposited. So the transaction that we entered, if I push on this back arrow, it's going to show me that, you know, we mentioned over here uh, $113. That's a transaction. That's the amount, which is the money that is going to go and show in the undeposited funds. Let's have a look at that. So I'm going to go to reports, company and financial, and I will go to balance sheet standard. Because when I go to the balance sheet standard, that is the, the place from where I will be able to see the undeposited funds account which is right over here it's a part of asset right so I'll double click on that over here and I will be able to see my sales receipt transaction which is right over here for daily customer sales which is $113 so that's the impact which has gone and set over there right it is um, in the undeposited funds where I took it and now whenever I deposit in my bank let's say in a day I had 20 transactions and then I took the money to the bank and completed deposit I can do that step which is the next one uh, that is record deposit now that is one impact the second impact also happened on that which is in the GST HST this payable account so if I double click on that that's a liability account if I click on that I'm gonna see over here there are already a bunch of transactions but I'm gonna focus on this column which is type and you will see the $13 is right over here the portion of the sales tax is what is going to show in the GST HST payable account so basically that's how where it will go and sit um, if someone wants to understand that what happened with the transaction journal you can click on this reports and there is a transaction journal that will show you this is how the transaction got recorded over here so undeposited funds got debited by 113 dollars sales got credited by 100 and which is right over here and GST HST payable got credited by 100 so you know a little bit advanced but just in case someone wants to understand what has happened now if I come out from here that's the balance sheet if I go to the reports go to company and financial and profit and loss standard then I should be able to see over here the sales of $100 which is right over here so basically you know the impact has gone wherever it needs to the balance sheet is updated the profit and loss is updated there is no account receivable because when you enter or create a sales receipts there is no uh, money which is yet to be received because it is already received and that's the reason you are recording a sales receipt now if someone is unable to see this particular box which is deposit to that means that you know the undeposited funds which which I can see over here or any other account which I can select maybe you have not activated that so uh, let's see how to do that part so what we need to do is we go to edit and we need to go to preferences on the left over here okay and once we are in preferences uh, over here you'll be able to see payments in this left bar and uh, once you click on the payments you got to click on company preferences like this so company preferences and then you will have this option over here use undeposited funds as a default deposit to account yours is probably checked like this right and you know let's say if I do like that kind of thing and click OK uh, what is going to happen is QuickBooks is going to give a pop-up QuickBooks must close all its open windows to change this preference and I did that uh, click OK and let's say I'm going, I'm going to go back, go back to the home page go to create sales receipts and uh, once it opens up you will see that my deposit to account which was that field is no longer there so basically now I if I record the transaction it will straight away go and sit only uh, again in the undeposited funds the only thing is I, I will not have the option that you know if I want to take it to the bank account directly or, or to any other account I cannot do that let's do that once again daily customer sales I'm going to record pick that up let's say we are date is good and the uh, sales receipt number has automatically incremented I'm okay with this particular 
sold to because I maybe I don't need to give this uh, individual any kind of receipt but let's say you know I had done a chair sales before and the guy has came and he's, he's telling me that you know the handle has broken for one of the sides and they're looking for a handle okay no worries it's a uh, $20 so I have it right over here and uh, I'm just gonna select over here like this thank you for your business um, if I want to preview I certainly can preview over here this particular sales receipt again that you know it has the quantity rate amount and all those stuff if I click on close and will be out of here if I want to send as an email the receipt to them I can do that by clicking on the email the small drop down but everything is good let's say I do save and close over here now what's going to happen if I go to reports again and go to company and financial and have a look at my balance sheet standard then you will be able to see that again in the deposited funds let let me go and find out did my $20 plus tax get reported over here there you go the last transaction is that the one which I did uh, if I double click on that of course I can open it right and as I mentioned uh, because there is no deposit to that means it goes automatically to the undeposited funds account okay I can click X from here um, if I open my previous transaction you will see the same situation because now we have turned off that undeposited which was previously active all right guys so that is sales receipt from here you can pick it up right and record the transaction remember no accounts receivable anytime you want to record a transaction hitting your you know sales portion whichever you take as well as um, uh, the customer without getting um, having any balance you can do that one last thing before I close off if, uh, if I go to the customers right and anytime I want to find out I want to see all my transactions which are of uh, daily sales I just have to select this customer there is no balance pending because there is no accounts receivable but the good thing is I will be able to see all the transactions over here for whatever period I can decide the period from here I want to see um, only for this month or this month to date or to yesterday or you know today whatever options you want you can pick it up right not only that and then you say I want to see as a report you can click on the run report and you can view as a report as well many times this is a very common question which has been asked to me that hey you know what how do I get a list of all my sales receipt transactions well this is where you will be able to find those right that amount showing up over here all right guys hopefully that uh, does help out with respect to the sales receipt how to record and view the reports on that all right guys hopefully you found this video helpful please like our video and subscribe to our channel if you did like it for more videos also let me know in comments what would you like to see in future videos i.e harsh i want to see this video or harsh can you make a video on this topic for accounting and bookkeeping quickbooks desktop quickbooks online microsoft excel canadian income tax t1 canadian income tax t2 or canadian payroll alternatively you can also visit us at fintechsolutions.ca for our courses Thanks for watching.